We don't need them. <clears throat> Good evening, board members, Mr. Turman, stakeholders. It gives me great pleasure to stand before you this evening to discuss where we are currently um, with our ESSER funding. Our agenda for this evening is as follows. We'll be looking at the top five events in which schools felt that ESSER funding made the most significant impact. We will discuss expenditure forecasts for all of the ESSER accounts that we currently serve. ESSER three, learning loss, after school, summer, arch, homeless grant, and I will discuss the closeout procedures. As we know, this particular funding source will sunset on September 30th of 2024. As you see before you, um, it's me and a, a big mess trying to secure all of the homeless grants um, supplies for steel. Uh, we wanted to make sure that steel had the same opportunities as all of the other buildings. They have received two uh, different allocations. And so I ordered personally myself the items to place in the cougar closet for steel elementary and that's the picture you see there I me mean, going through all of the items that was ordered and inventoried so right now all of the items are ordered and inventoried and we are storing them over at the annex building as you see before you the district is on track um, in its entirety to utilize all of the homeless grants funding the grant was approximately $267,000. Um, to date, we've spent about $196,000. We still have several schools, three to four, who still has their second allocation in the pipeline. And so that should definitely wipe out the remaining uh, 20 grand. We have done a lot to support our students and families with this funding source. Every single building has a cougar closet that's stocked with materials that could support our families who are McKinney Bento uh, families. Additionally, we purchase gas cards to support our families um, as well as laundry cards. And so so all of those are available to be checked out through our office, and we have uh, an accountability system, whereas they're checked out only specifically by our homeless uh, supervisor and checked back in with the actual amounts that was sent out and signed for by our parents. We wanted to make sure that the accountability uh, measures were in place in order to, to meet the federal guidelines. As you can see here, as I spoke earlier, I talked about the top five things that our building leaders felt that made the significant impact within their buildings, um, utilizing ESSER funding, of course, ESSER two, um, as well from last year, ESSER three for student and staff incentives. Um, and so looking at John Harris, the top five things that they felt that was most influential was PBIS awards available, uh, teacher and staff recognition, um, various conference tables and chairs and uh, desks throughout the building. And one of the main things was they implemented and installed a fitness equipment uh, shared around the courtyard, uh, similar to how it is on the waterfront. Um, in Harrisburg. The next school is SciTech. Um, SciTech was very fortunate to receive an entire fitness center, um, a state of the arts. The, the students, when I've gone over there, they really spoke on how well um, they felt that this has been influential for them. Um, they talked about the PBIS awards as well as the new furniture throughout the building. And then, of course, staff and student recognition. Um, later on, you will see a video uh, from the student's mouth of our scholars, and they will talk to you about how they felt the ESSER made a difference in their uh, learning climates in their buildings. Next, you have 
Marshall Math and Science. Um, I know we talked about it in previous presentations, whereas you've seen pictures of the science labs outside. Now that the weather is good, I wouldn't mind going over and actually seeing a class being conducted outside. And the students are actually utilizing those spaces um, to um, take the learning out into the actual um, environment. All classrooms re receive furniture, as well as different PBIS programming and sentence and celebrations and field trips throughout the school year in order to promote um, a climate of conducive for learning. Next up, Roland. Roland had uh, a lot of significant um, items that they utilize in their spending plan. One of the most, I think, was um, influential is the PBIS behavior modification room where students earn to go in and play games and, and what have you with their friends. Um, I think that uh, Melissa, the, the former principal who actually set this up through her spending plan, did a phenomenal job with ordering the items and making sure they were inventoried um, and that there's only two keys to this uh, particular room, whereas we can really secure the items for, for students to use from years to come, as well as different staff incentives and recognitions. Um, under the leadership of the new principal, he brought in various field trips for each grade level based on their behavior and academic uh, success. Camp Curtin, some of the larger things that they felt was a significant impact was the basketball um, backboards outside for the students to be able to utilize, uh, PBIS incentives, staff incentives, uh, desks throughout the building, and most important, they replaced the fence. Um, at the facility. Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin ordered a lot of PBIS and, and student incentive um, items where they have a cart that they take around. Um, they have a similar uh, cash flow for behavior incentives, just as Cougar Academy does. They receive new playground equipment, student desks, and instruments was the top five things that the principal felt was significant. Downey Elementary, um, had the opportunity to not only do one playground, but two playgrounds. Originally, she um, had requested the original playground for pre-K through one. Uh, we got that approved and then we came back and we asked for the additional and uh, we were granted that as well. So the playgrounds are, are really uh, a hit with the kids as well as um, the staff because the students are able to get out that energy and then get back into the lesson and be well attentive. A lot of student incentives um, that has been ordered for uh, PBIS initiatives, as well as an outdoor seating area over at Downey Elementary. I, I kind of laughed at um, Rhonda. I said, Rhonda, you, you don't have any more. She was like, oh, I was sending through another pre-approval. She was so funny. I, I had to crack up, but I, I, I'm enthusiastic about anyone who wants to do additional things for children um, to help them academically and behavioral. So um, at Melrose, the top 10 things, they were um, given the, the new playground. They were the last one to get the playground. Um, so that was one of the most important things um, they felt that made an impact on the grades across the board, um, as well as their PBIS incentives. They have a, a cougar cart that they go around and they recognize students for the three R's as well. Um, they give out attendance trophies, and they are doing graduation recognition um, for their fifth grade students and um, staff attendance, as well as they are doing various Cougar uh, luncheons to recognize students and staff for their achievements. Cougar Academy, of course, they received the playground for the middle grades, high school grades, as well as the elementary grade levels. Um, he talked about the PBIS incentives that has been going on. He talked about the, the machine that actually um, makes the t-shirts. All of those items were funded through um, ESSER funding. Steel Elementary. I wanted to um, give a, a brief update on some of the upcoming uh, work I collaborated along with Mr. Reedy in order to place this in there. These are the things that are currently um, upcoming work. The cafeteria addition, underground work is, is starting. Um, the floor installation, finish the baller room interior, 
all of the things that are basically listed here on the slides are, is where we're, we currently are. Um, so I'm, I'm constantly kind of reaching out to Mr. Reedy to make sure that I'm keeping a pulse on where we are with regards to um, steel. The next school, Stott Elementary. Some of the main things, of course, they received a new playground as well. Um, and then new furniture, classroom furniture throughout. They created areas within the stage area to upgrade um, their system, as well as PBIS incentives to improve the climate over at Scott. And they purchased various PBIS um, implementation items for students to earn, not only through ESSER funding, but as well as through their ATSI, which is ESSER as well, and their um, CSI. Boost. Boost had a, a fantastic upgrades done to their auditorium, um, their lights, or what have you. Will has been super excited about what he can do and what he could show. He cracks me up every time I talk to him. Um, but they also had additions to their playground, swing sets, or what have you, new fencing. Um, some of the things that we went back to ask, because originally they only had a playground, and he was like, well, Dr. T, can you see if we can get a swing set added and fence, and we put that in, and, and it was approved, as well as they received uh, furniture for their fourth and fifth grade classrooms. So he felt that those items made the most significant impact, as well as opportunities for their students to be interactive with STEM projects. And that brings us to ATSI. I kind of mentioned a little bit of it uh, a few moments ago. We have two schools um, that are ATSI schools, Scott and Foose, and they received $143,000 um, to support teaching and learning and behavioral. Um, most of the things that was done in both of those buildings were slated for mathematics, as well as professional development, student incentives um, to support teaching and learning. And so right now we are slated to utilize all of the funding before, of course, it sunsets. Um, Scott does have about $8,000 that they are planning to do uh, professional development over the summer um, with, their, with their staff. Learning loss. Um, learning loss has been a journey. Dr. Slaughter and I, we've been going back and forth trying to, uh, as my mom said, make the pocketbook string last longer, right? <laughs> so um, we just received um, approval on yesterday for an additional amendment that was done. We completed an amendment last year because the original um, actual budget narrative was written by former administration. And so we sat down and we redid it so it could be in alignment with what the initiatives were um, for this particular administration in moving our students in the district forward. And so at this juncture, we ended up going back when we realized that there were some of the things that we placed in the plan. We were able to get, um, I guess, cheaper quotes and, and the original projected cost wasn't um, we didn't exceed it, so we were able to uh, reappropriate money in order to provide uh, additional professional development that Dr. Slaughter wanted. One of the things that we did was we requested approval for all of the district to receive standards training. Um, additionally, we are projected to take 50 um, staff members, administrators, and assistant principals, as well as slated um district leaders at the auspice control of Dr. Slaughter, of course, who she would like to attend the conference um, that's slated in Washington, D.C. I will flip it over to Dr. Slaughter and see if you want to chime in and say a little bit more about those two entities. Sure. Um, so um, everyone has been familiar or listening to what we've been talking about, our mantra, GLEAM, a great level, engaging, affirming, and meaningful 
um, instruction and what that means for equitable instruction for our scholars across the district. So the work of Unbound Ed um, through the Standards Institute really grounds their work in um, the understanding of teaching and learning and what that means for the knowledge of the, the shifts of um, the Common Core and what that means for um, our teachers and what they bring forth in terms of ensuring that our scholars have first and foremost grade level um, standards in front of them and the tasks and the work that they're asking them to do is aligned. It also helps us uh, additionally to support them in um, how they build and differentiation so scholars can access. Um, we know and we've seen in the data um, that um, uh, many of our scholars uh, in cases are grade levels below in reading and math. And so the Standards Institute not only ensures that our teachers, uh, leaders, uh, district administration knows and understands what equitable, equitable instruction is, but also helps us design and um, identify tools to support them. Uh, this year, we're really excited to take GLEAM to the next step with um, planning and preparation. That will be a major focus of the work of professional learning for next school year, ensuring that teachers can collaborate across grade levels uh, as well as content. And so um, the time that we'll spend this summer uh, with Standards Institute will be GLEAM, uh, grounded in uh, GLEAM, but as well as planning and preparation, which is one of the largest um, things that we saw across the district this year from many organizations in our walkthroughs as well. That is a huge need, um, specifically with our human capital uh, and a number of our teachers with emergency certifications. So that ties perfectly into what I was getting ready to say. As you can see with our uh, learning loss, expenditure forecast, 80% of the allocation was devoted to professional development. As uh, Dr. Slaughter indicated, there are a lot of novice teachers who really need that additional support. And so with those two measures in place, we have assured that throughout this particular budget narrative that the bulk of it was geared towards professional development for our teachers and staff. After school, um, currently now the after school funds have been given to students from K through 12 opportunities to actually complete in all of those particular items that's listed there, research first particular projects, as well as working with our scholars on their uh, deficiency areas that's pretty much determined based on their benchmark assessments that we heard um, our previous administrator just spoke on. And so looking at that data to determine what those deficiency areas are and then working with those scholars in order to help them master those particular uh, standards. The after school program, as you can see, has been um, targeted for the majority of the spending was for um, staff, making sure that the staff was there in place in order to support um, our students in the evenings, um, as well as to determine what are the areas that they need those additional support measures. So we wanted to make sure that it was a smooth transition from the day program to the afternoon program in the collaboration with day school uh, teachers, as well as the teachers in the afternoon. Um, I know that Dr. Kersey works very closely with her teachers to ensure um, that they have a particular lesson plan that they utilize as well as she's conferencing with them and looking at the data um, alongside the building leaders. Our summer program, our summer program is geared towards same grade levels. Um, this year it's going to be at Pacific, uh, excuse me, Pacific campuses, can't even get that out. Um, but of course, ESSER will be um, funding summer programs as well. What ended up happening on last year, um, the total funding for summer programs was $558,000, give or take. And we used a large portion of it on last school year um, during the summer. And so we needed to add additional fundings to make sure that the summer program um, would take place this year. And so Dr. Um, Slaughter and I and Dr. Kersey, we met, um, we collaborated, and we actually put additional allocation in our learning loss, which was a part of the amendment that 
we did originally to ensure that there was programming to be provided for our, our scholars um, this summer. After this summer, um, hopefully, we, I'm, the, I'm not sure, have you found out yet about the 21st century? Okay, so we will hope that the district receives a 21st century uh, learning grant, and therefore um, our scholars will continually be provided after school as well as summer uh, programming. And so this summer, um, we also put in monies for students to actually do field trips. There's a field trip, I think, that's already on the board agenda that I seen um, a few moments ago. And so we wanted to uh, provide them an opportunity not only to do project-based learning programs throughout the summer, but also be able to go out and experience um, various venues that would expand their educational knowledge. And as you can see, um, this is where we were with regards to the, fend the spending of summer um, programming expenses. And so, again, we added $200,000 um, in the allocation um, to give Dr. Kersey around $460,000 to plan um, a robust summer program. The last thing, oh, did I pass? Hold on. Okay, there we go. I'm sorry. I skipped over ESSER 3. So we are definitely on target um, to utilize our ESSER 3 funding. Um, we know that some of our large ticket items are a part of this particular funding source. We utilize our salaries for HBLA, my salaries, incentives uh, for students and staff, um, as well as Steel. And so at this time, I would like to turn it over to Dr. Stokes to expand a little bit more on ESSER 3 status. So I always want to bring attention to when things might not look. And if you look at that graph, we said we were going to spend about $33 million this year. And you can say, oh, well, we're just under $12 million and it's approaching the end of the year. Do we have to be concerned? And as Dr. Thompson mentioned, we have two major projects that are funded by that. One of them is the HVAC project that TRAIN is doing, which is approximately $10 million. And then we also have STEEL, which is well underway and will be completed prior to the sunset of this grant. When you look at what's outstanding for those two items alone, it totals about $20.6 million. So I just want to bring light to that discrepancy um, because those are two big ticket items that are still in the process of being completed. Thank you, Dr. Stokes. Okay. As I alluded to um, early on, we will be closing out our ESSER project um, 9.30 of this year. And so one of the things in order to prepare for it is to ensure that I completed a final monthly forecast um, in which I did on today. And I, I will show uh, Dr. Stokes where we are uh, collectively with all of those funding pots. I basically gave you um, a summary of where we are, but dollar wise and what we need to do in order to ensure that every single dime is accounted for and no money goes back. Um, to the state is, is the goal. Um, I talked to you about completing the amendment for learning loss that was completed and approved and um, on yesterday. And so we do need to do one additional uh, amendment and that is for ESSER 3. And so that is on its way. I've already started it. And so we will make sure that that is completed prior to 9, the 9.30, the closing of 9.30. Um, as you see before you, it is a disposition form. Um, we know that there are some redistricting going on and some schools being moved. So in, to ensure that we are in compliance, I created this form, whereas principals will fill out and all of the equipment that has been purchased with ESSER funding will be listed there. Um, throughout the time that I've been here, we have completed inventories for all of the items that have been purchased with ESSER funding. It is in the team's drive, it's very easily inaccessible. So when the auditors or uh, come in, we are able to pull that information um, with, without any uh, concerns. And so they will be receiving information on what needs to take place and how it needs to be done prior to June 30th. So all of these items will, will be in place. 
um, PDE reports. I will be continuously working um, with PDE to fulfill any reports that needs to be done. We have a monitoring that's coming uh, to the district April the 30th, and they will be here April the 30th through May the 2nd. Um, as of Friday, I have uploaded all of the information that they requested prior to arrival into Fed Monitor. And so that information is already provided to them. I have also set up a Teams drive for my colleagues to upload any information um, that they may request once they are on site. And therefore, I can take the information from our Teams drive and upload it into Fed Monitor. And at this time, I would like to let you hear from the mouth of scholars how they felt the spending of ESSER funding benefited their schools to date. What? You don't? You don't have to take that. While that's loading, uh, Dr. Thompson, yes. just a quick update on the 21st century grant. We did get the feedback back probably about a week ago. I did okay. send that to the federal programs. Okay. Um, we did not get the grant. Oh. Uh, uh, they funded 61 districts. We came in that number, I believe, was 67. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, I wanted to show the video because the kids were actually talking about um, what they felt ESSER actually provided for each one of the buildings. And so each um, building had a representative and the student actually shared um, their perspective on what ESSER actually um, did based on their lenses in their building. So it's unfortunate. Oh, well. I don't understand why. But anyway, moving right along. Dr. Thompson, we can post this to the website yes. on our ESSER page and make sure that the link is open so okay. that anybody can go watch the video in the future. Okay. Thank you. All right. So at this time, Mr. Terman, uh, Dr. Stokes, board members, stakeholders, I want to personally thank you for having me in this role. Um, it seems like these two years have gone by really, really fast. Um, I am certainly elated about the work that has been done with in conjunction with my colleagues to provide uh, services for the students um, here in Harrisburg City Schools. A big thank you to all of my colleagues who collaborated with me during this process. And at this time, I will entertain any questions. Um, Dr. you do such a thorough job. I'm sure that we're not going to have very many questions, but I believe, did I hear Mr. Carter on the Zoom? That was Ms. Copeland. Oh, Ms. Copeland. Okay, yes. Ms. Copeland, go ahead. So, uh, two questions. Uh, I would say, I'm not sure Mr. Terman can answer. You said, as for the 21st century grant, it was not approved. Uh, was there any appeal or do we have feedback on that denial of that grant? We did get feedback. Um, they were... There were certain categories where we didn't score as high as obviously we would have wanted to. Um, I did send the feedback once again to federal programs. So they had uh, that in case it would be something they could use moving forward uh, in case the grant comes out within the next year. Case the application comes again for the 21st century grant. So out of the, I believe it was 90 some districts that put in, uh, we scored 67 uh, and they only took the first 61 districts. So um, the mm -hmm. feedback that was received, I did send it to uh, Dr. Craig, uh, Dr. Stokes, and then also federal program, so at least had the information. Okay, so we did. Did we not appeal it? The decision? No, there is no appeal. There, there's no appeal there's no process. Appeal. There's no appeal. Okay, and is that something that we also can that can be shared amongst the board members just to see that feedback piece of it? Yeah, well, I can. I can send the feedback. Okay. 
Thank you. And then my other question is, I know we spoke about, I know you said there's a deadline coming with the ESSERS funding uh, September 30th of this year. Is there any extension on that for a case that we're not able to uh, disperse or use all that, use all the fundings in that time frame? So we automatically have until January, um, but the money has to be appropriated and encumbered by 930. So what that means is we can't pay people after 930. If we've signed a contract, issued a purchase order, but maybe the services haven't been fully rendered, we have until January to render those. If we are still unable to do that, we can go through a process to have an extension on the actual spending of that, which would require DOE, US DOE approval and reimbursement would be quite delayed um, because it would need to go from the state to the U.S. Department of Education to be released and back to PDE. So our goal is to not have to go through that process and to make sure we are fully expended timely. Okay, thank you. And then my final question would be, um, I know we spoke a lot about uh, different the school uh, buildings and a lot of different um, with the uh, different beautifications that were done. And I'm not sure... If we did speak, I know it was a little bit, but if we could speak a little bit with the addressing the learning loss and support, were there any like after schools besides what we're doing in the school as for our teachers after school? Is there any other after school networks or program and enrich enrichment programs that are that, you know, we talked about or was that in there in this presentation? Um, yes, Ms. Copeland, it was in the uh, presentation. Uh, some of the things that we're doing are um, with other external partners like Girls on the, on on the run. run. Okay, uh, I was yeah. going to say that was, okay, I did see the Girls on the Run, so I was like, I did see a little bit of it, but I was just trying to see if there was any other additional, so I, that's fine. I did see a few of the different programs, just seeing if there were any outsides besides the ones that were presented today, but thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have uh, I have a question. I just wanted to elaborate a little more on what Ms. Copeland said. Uh, pretty much she asked the similar questions that I was going to ask. Um, aside from, uh, well, since the district has been experiencing a lot of learning loss, has I mean, is it possible for us to look at other alternative methods as far as looking at the Boys and Girls Club or different facilities that our students use after school to try to co collaborate with them a little more to see what we can do academic-wise to push our kids while they're out in the home setting? Uh, absolutely. Um, I am going to be taking a look at the feedback. Uh, Dr. Stokes did just share it with me, um, as well as as we're talking through the budgeting process and depending on what can happen, um, starting to think about what it looks like and what it means for uh, extended learning next school year as well as next summer. So we okay. will be researching, uh, seeing if there are other fundings out there, other grants that could be uh, available to us and other alternatives. So we'll, we'll get right on it. Okay, no problem. Thank you too, Dr. Slaughter. I appreciate it. Ms. Robinson. I just had a quick question about, is there, um, are there any funds that are unallocated and how much of that is unallocated? And what's you, our what's our balance to be? Are you spent? referring to specific ESSER funds that are unallocated? No. Okay. We uh Dr. Thompson does a phenomenal job working with every principal to develop spending plans all the way down to the building level. Mm -hmm. Then we work with academics or, for example, Dr. Kersey. So everything in ESSER is 100% allocated. Okay. And we do expect to. And we expect to expend it all. Okay. Thank you. So one of the things I wanted to share, I, I can't remember who asked the question um, to Mr. Terman with regards to an appeals process. In my previous role at Maryland State Department of Education, I was responsible for the 21st Century Grant. And typically how it works is we take in the application and based on the scores, where you the scores cut off based on the money. So if there was additional funding, then it drops down to the next uh, particular district. So that's how it basically works. Thank you. Yep, that was me. Sean, okay. did you get it to work? Okay. Sean is trying to get the video to work. Any other questions? Uh, Dr. Thompson, I just want to say, uh, since we remember Dr. Stokes and I interviewed you, that was probably about two years ago, it feels like 20. 
And um, I remember doing that interview, you know, we kind of talked through the responsibility of Esther and, and making sure that we had a person who was really going to stay on top of it. So um, as we close this out, I just want to say I thank you personally uh, for everything you've done to keep us above board with this. Um, with the amount of money we were talking about with Esther, um, it could have very easily have gone in a different direction. Uh, but you really did a good job of keeping everybody on task with what needed to be done. And you definitely need me to be commended for that. So I thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Sussi, I just want to thank the doctor for her presentation. And that whole thing cannot be easy. Watching her in the room, that this woman is tracking money programs. She's in the room, and I was proud of her because that's a layman work. You could have easily designated, you could never designate your responsibility, but your authority you can. And she could have had somebody else in there. Mr. Roy, Mr. Roy, she actually, did. she's the administrator in charge of ESSER, and she was hired to facilitate all of the revenue and expenditures, $83 million worth. So that's not a, a job to delegate. That was solely her responsibility, and that's what we hired her for, and we made the right hire. And, I think and, you're and talking and about with me doing the boxes I'm and the inventory. I'm talking about them boxes. Ain't yeah. for that. But, but see, that's where okay. administrators go over and above the call and of duty did. and, and are often not comment. recognized for that. that. They didn't hire her to separate them banks. They hired her to administrate that program, and I agree, you know, but I'm giving her the compliment and a job well done. Thank you. Sarah. And I concur. Thank you. Thank you. Did you get it to work? No. Okay. Well, if there's no other questions, I don't think Sean was able to get the, the yes. Okay. He's going to play the video. It's two more minutes. Not even two minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Jabari from the Camp Curtin campus, and I'm here to thank Esther for the improvements to our classroom and all around school environment. Hi, my name is Gianna. I go to Ben Franklin School. I would like to thank Esther for improving our classrooms, playgrounds, and our school. Hi, my name is Aiden, and I am thankful for Esther for doing my classroom furniture. It was very nice, and I really do like it. I like the new playground, I like the two new playgrounds, and I like the new school. Hi, my name is Shirai Murray. I go to the first elementary school, and I'd like to thank Esther for the improvements in our classrooms, our playgrounds, and our school. Thank you, Esther. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Deshaun. I go to Rowland, and we would like to thank Esther for our new furniture, equipment, and school items. Hello, my name is Tony. I go to Scott School. I'd like to thank Esther for supplies and equipment for our school. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Mackenzie, and I go to Melrose Elementary. I would like to thank Esther for our new playground, our furniture, and our new school supplies. Hi, my name is Rachel. I go to Marshall Math and Science Academy. I'd like to thank Esther for the following. Thank you for the all new science labs in the courtyards. Thank you for the new furniture that we can also find around the building. Also, thank you for the honors trips, like roller skating that we get to go on. Hi, I'm uh, Maureen, and I attend Science High School. And I'd like to thank Esther for gym equipment, our classroom equipment, and the field trips. Hi, my name is Sajane. I go to John Harris. Thank you, Esther, for provided us with equipment outside, furniture, and other items. I'm Gary with Clone. I've been with HBLA since seventh grade. I love HBLA because of the accessibility and the independence I get with my school and schoolwork. My name is Rufus Arthur. I, I attend Cougar Academy. Today, I will be talking about the ESSERS Fund and what it has done to impact my learning at Cougar Academy. So we have our new library, all the new furniture. Um, it looks way better than it did last year and the past years. I've been here for four years now, and uh, we have a lot of new furniture. The chairs moved. They got wheels on them. We have a lot of new books as well. 
and we have a nice library teacher who changes the books every season. Um, and then also we do have a new playground, the new furniture in the cafeteria as well. Uh, we didn't have enough seats for some of the students and now we do. If there's no other questions, thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Okay, so the next portion of our agenda is public comment. We have four public comments this evening. Please note you're allotted three minutes for your public comment. At 30 seconds, I will give you a courtesy wave. One more time, you are allotted three minutes for your public comment. And when you have 30 seconds to go, I'll give you a, a, a courtesy wave. wave. First, we have Mr. William Yule. If you could state your name and address for the record. Please, please come to the microphone. Thank you. William Yule, 1429 North 15th Street, Harrisburg. Good evening. I'd like to take a moment. First of all, I was advised to come and present to the board this morning, this evening. I'd like to take a moment to offer my deepest apologies to the students and to the staff at Harrisburg High School for my involvement in the event that brought much negative attention and embarrassment to the district. It was not that day and has never been my intention to do so. I've spent the last seven years of my life doing everything in my ability to make Harrisburg High School worth attending. For the last seven years, I've been employed by the district without one disciplinary mark on my record, not one. I've held morning prayer for teachers. I've encouraged students. I've clothed students. I've fed students and their parents according to the, to the need that was presented. I spent the last six years of my employment in the Department of Special Education. I was the pair of the year for three consecutive years, and I was told I would win every year, but if they don't give the award to someone else, people would start complaining. Since the incident, I've had countless teachers reach out to me and show their support. Even up until today, my time at Harrisburg High School was never spent in an attempt to get rich, but it was used as a venue to minister to a sect of the community that absolutely needed ministering to. I say all this to say that's why I was surprised. It surprised me to hear the premature audio voice message sent out proclaiming that I went into a classroom and attacked the teacher. That was not the case. And there is video evidence to prove what I'm saying. That was an attempt by people in the district to point, paint a narrative that, was, that they wanted to run with. I know without argument that what I did was unprofessional. But I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge that the act of the district sending the premature voice message out was just as unprofessional. I have too much to lose from an aspect of social equity to do something like that. The investigation done by the school district was equally shoddy and unfair. It was never done to get to the bottom of the issue, but rather to maintain the false narrative that was put forth in the premature message. I'm proud of the time I spent and the work I've done over the past seven years at Harrisburg High School. I regret what happened on that day, but that's all I regret. How many of you can say that? Seven years at one job and only one regret. Those stats are phenomenal. Those who have rule over this situation may live in a state of perfection, but I'm one who at times in my life stood in need of grace. For that cause, I've never preached or taught perfection to anyone, but I did and will continue to preach and teach character. Character is what allows me to stand in front of you. Thank on you. That's it. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate you. Next, we have, is it Eric Jackson? And if you could state your name and address for the record, please. Just a quick reminder, you have three minutes and I'll give you a courtesy wave at 30 seconds. My name is Eric Jackson, um, 2111 North 4th Street. That is the um, address 
of note, the church where I'm assistant associate pastor there. Um, but I've been in part of the Harrisburg School District since March the 17th of 1986 from the old John uh, Scott School. Um, here just to share one another hat as part of the Harrisburg Black Think Tank uh, to share with you about on the 25th through 26th of May, the African-American Expo of Central Pennsylvania will be held at the Soldiers Grove on 7th Street. At that time, there will be various uh, entities that will be represented uh, using the name Village. So it will be a health village. So there will be sponsors from High Mart, UPMC, various health agencies. There will be artists, various speakers. And even as we just come out of African-American history, as we go uh, come out of um, Women's History Month and down in April, International Jazz Month and Poetry Month. Uh, and I can look at Mr. Ellis Rule, who I don't know very well, but I know that he was part of the Black Panthers back in the day um, and probably marched in some of these areas. In fact, right on uh, Walnut Street, there was a facility there. Uh, John Scott School was named after John uh, P. Scott, 1859, his birth, and was the first African-American teacher in Harrisburg School District, as well as on the school board. So there's a lot to share that can be even woven into curriculum here in Harrisburg School District. So uh, we, we're here representing Harrisburg um, Community Black Think Tank, Sister Aisha Mobley over there as a member. And uh, just encourage the district to get the information. We're going to send it out to your PR person, Ms. Kirsten uh, Keys and hopefully uh, can encourage students to come out, staff to come out, administrators to come out and make Harrisburg uh, a place to be, some place to be proud of, and hopefully be able to, again, weave the information that will be shared into the curriculums uh, here at within the Harrisburg School District. So if there's any questions, uh, please feel free. But we'll be sending information out to uh, the school district so that you can disseminate it to the community at large. Thank you. Next, we have Pastor Earl Harris. And if you could just state your name and not just for the record, just a quick reminder, you have three minutes and I'll give you a courtesy wave at 30 seconds. Good evening, my name is Earl Harris and 103 South 21st Street, Harrisburg, PA. 17104. I admire the fact that the school board members are serving, if, even though you don't have the power and the authority in the, as you had in the past. And you have a very difficult task of trying to get a school out of receivership. It hasn't happened in Pennsylvania. And regrettably, whether the school comes out of receivership or not, the school district is a cash cow. It's a cash cow for those who receive the contracts to provide services, construction, et cetera. The limited data we have thus far is that 98% of them are white. Regrettably, that seems to be an ongoing process. So I'm pleased to see that there is going to be a disparity study. So it's to document what has occurred and perhaps the culture within the school district will be changed and modified to reflect this harsh reality. Secondly, I'm going to encourage you to look at what Dr. Waters has recommended. Find ways to keep more of that tax dollars which are given to con people and contracts and entities which live outside of the school district, even outside of the county, keep more of it in the school district so they pay taxes, so you turn the money over. The Asians keep their money in their community 29 days. The Jews keep it 19 days. The white Gentiles, 17 days. And Black America, six days hours. How long does the school district, and what is it doing with the money that is coming in? We need to keep more of the contracts here so we can get more revenue coming in. 42% of the land is owned by the state 
can't be taxed in the city of Harrisburg. You got to keep more revenue in the school district. I think I'm going to finish early. Yes. Kara, just a reminder, you have three minutes and I'll give you a courtesy wave at third. Be short and sweet. My name is Kara McClung. My address is 717 2nd Street, Harrisburg, PA, 17102. And I just wanted to speak on behalf of my pastor, Lamont Yule. A man's heart, <clears throat> excuse me, a man's heart isn't to be judged by man as God is in control of all things. One thing pastor is always going to do is show up in the face of adversity. His character is never reflective of the things going on around him. He stands in the gap for so many people, even in spite of all of life's challenges. He is a man of complete integrity, a man with a heart for all people. He takes every role in his life seriously, a man of God, a father, a husband, and a teacher. That's it. This concludes the public comment section of the agenda. Please note board policy 903 can be found on the district's website. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Secretary. And if Pastor Harris is still here, I'm hoping that he'll stick around for this next item of discussion uh, so that, that he can hear this. But before we move on to old business for this evening, I need to indicate that there was an item missed on the agenda tonight. And because we are not permitted to add to the agenda after it's published, I wanted to publicly state that um, I am appointing Jeffrey Sultanic of Box Rothschild, who is solicitor for the district to serve as hearing officer for the premier charter school uh, termination proceedings. So we will be ratifying that action at the April 24th meeting, but so that he can proceed with contacting other counsel, I wanted to make sure that is on the record this evening. Moving on to our old business item, the disparity study. And I wanted Pastor Harris to be able to hear uh, the discussion about this tonight because he has been at many of our meetings for uh, the last year or so, and I wanted to give an update. So I'm going to begin tonight with an update for the school board and the public on the status of the work that was performed by Maxico Consulting, and then we're going to talk about the disparity study. So this is from Biko Taylor, who is the primary principal working on this project for the district. Back in October 2023, Mexico Consulting engaged in a phase two plan to improve supplier diversity at the Harrisburg School District. Summarizing a few items that he has been working on since that time, Mexico presented data that demonstrated the district is effective in executing contracts on behalf of students and families, and from an operations perspective, have strong leadership in this regard, but could benefit from some process improvement initiatives that uh, Mr. Taylor believes that our chief financial officer is very well equipped to execute on. Mexico also identified opportunities to assist our superintendent with providing key opportunities for small disadvantaged businesses to serve the Harrisburg School District by leveraging a strong pipeline of district contractual needs in good services and construction to provide opportunities for economic growth for those valued local small businesses. Mexico also discovered that the district hosted a very successful vendor outreach event in March of 2023 that demonstrated there are capable businesses in Harrisburg who are ready to get to work and serve our students and parents in a greater capacity. Thus, there were 11 short-term recommendations to facilitate that growth and nine longer-term recommendations to ensure that growth could be sustained for many years to come. Of the 11 near-term recommendations, Six of those are considered complete by Mr. Taylor, and five of those items are still in process. He has high confidence that at least 10 of the 11 recommendations will be complete by the end of fiscal year 23-24. 
and he is very encouraged by a few particular items, and he asked that I discuss these briefly with you. First of all, Maxico has designed a data dashboard. The dashboard was demoed for the superintendent on April 4th, 2024. The dashboard will be ready to be published after minor adjustments are made at the recommendation of the superintendent. This is very important to note. Prior to deploying a disparity study, it is critical that we are able to not only implement accountability mechanisms, but accurately measure progress, challenges, and wins using real-time data. This dashboard will allow the Harrisburg School District to do that, and this infrastructure will already be in place, and this is a significant milestone in this process. Mexico has developed an RFP that fills a critical need for students in the Harrisburg School District. In April, we will publish the first school athletics apparel RFP in over five years. This opportunity to serve students and promote the vibrant Cougar brand in our community as a sense of pride for parents, students, staff, and alumni was identified by Superintendent Eric Terman. Mexico stepped in to develop a bid that is aligned with the superintendent's core values. Mexico has facilitated discussions between district leadership and passionate community leaders and advocates, Pastor Harris being one of them, that consists of a diverse group of thought partners, including social justice leaders, clergy, and business leaders. These discussions have demonstrated that there is strong support for the receiver's recovery plan, and more importantly, strong coalitions that want to serve our students and parents in a way that provides sustainable support for the long term. Mexico has been agile, researching key items that influence how the district should move forward with creating economic opportunities for local businesses, including key court cases from across our country that provide insights into which programs will continue to be supported and any risk factors associated with those economic development programs. So as you can see, there's been a lot of work going on by Mr. Taylor, and he has been in constant communication with both Superintendent Terman and myself. He has also had some uh, interactions with Dr. Stokes, who has provided him a lot of data in terms of where we are with procurement. So he will be coming to a future board meeting to do a full presentation of where we are in this process. But in recent weeks, after he met with the community coalition, and I can tell you the community coalition uh, consisted of the following individuals, Mary Powell, founding partner of Power Law PC, Robert Torres, former secretary of the Department of Ed Aging for the Commonwealth, Rabbi Mark Klein, former attorney and social justice advocate, Rabbi Ariana Kaptaber, Bethel Temple, social justice advocate, Pastor Earl Harris, attorney and civil rights activist, Sheila Dow Ford, owner of Dow Ford Strategies, LLC, Joseph Robinson Jr., Harrisburg NAACP Executive Committee. So in his recent meetings with them, in discussing how best to make sure that we are able to sustain any movement toward hiring more persons of color in the Harrisburg School District, and most importantly, being able to make it legally defensible in the culture and climate in which we currently live in society, it was best recommended that we move forward with the disparity study that I had brought before this board uh, several months ago. And we had approved it back then, but if you recall, we decided to table it at the time and we were going to let Biko Taylor come in. He was introduced to us by uh, the district solicitor as someone with a very strong background, background in procurement, uh, both at the MCIU, City of Philadelphia, and then uh, the City of Portland. Mr. Taylor's uh, costs were well below that of the disparity study. The disparity study cost that was quoted to us at the time by eConsult Solutions was upward of $250,000. And though we believe that to be uh, a bit pricey, we decided to go in the direction of hearing what Mr. Taylor would, would come up with first. After Mr. Taylor has gone through his process and he's almost finished and is going to be able to come and present to you and meeting with the community coalition, 
he is now recommending to me as the receiver that we move forward with the disparity study. He arranged a meeting most recently with those same individuals at eConsult, and I'm very pleased to report that they came back and greatly reduced the cost by $100,000. And the reason they were able to bring it down to $150,000 instead of two fifty dollars was that the disparity study was done for the city of Harrisburg, as most of you know, uh, in the not too, dis or not too recent past. And so we're able to garner some of the same data that was used in that study because we are obviously uh, connected with the city of Harrisburg in terms of, of uh, geographics and demographics. So because they're able to use some of that data, that is going to significantly reduce the cost of the study. So I have attached to the agenda this evening, the proposal, I am not going to approve it tonight, but I wanted to put it on as an old business discussion item and in updating the board, ask if the board has any questions, uh, because our intent is that uh, we would be moving to uh, recommend approval for this under the superintendent's office at the April 24th board and receiver meeting. So I'd like to open the floor if there are any comments, questions, or concerns from the school board at this time. Ms. Robinson. I don't have any questions. I just wanted to say that I'm I'm actually really pleased that this is moving forward. It's been a while, and I know Pastor Harris has been pushing us for a very long time to get this done. And I'm just really glad to say to hear that uh, this is going to be happening soon. So thank you, and thank you for all the the hard work everyone that's in, that was involved to make this happen. So and again, thank you, Pastor Harris, for bringing this to us. Ms. Johnson. Hi, thank you, Dr. Suski. Uh, my question is just to confirm or uh, the list of names that you mentioned, um, are they all involved in the study or they had a meeting and they were a part of a decision? They are not involved in the study. Uh, part of Biko's work and his scope of service was that he was to interview different people in the community about what they would like to see in terms of bringing more black and brown contractors into the district. So that was the group that he formed. You're welcome. Any other questions? I'd like to come back to a point that was made earlier by Pastor Harris um, when he uh, mentioned uh, Dr. Waters' recommendation about keeping uh, taxpayer dollars in the city of Harrisburg. I absolutely concur that that is paramount to the economic success of the city and the school district moving forward. If we want to get out of receivership, knowing that so much of the property in Harrisburg is tax exempt, we need to find alternative sources of revenue. Payments in lieu of taxes are very hard to come by. You know, if if you have a nonprofit out there and, and they don't necessarily have to pay, uh, you know, some of the uh, educational institutions, as an example, it's very hard to get someone to buy into a, a payment in lieu of taxes. There are some out there who do give us payments in lieu of taxes. But when we need to look at how do we lift up the people in the city to enable them to make a meaningful wage that they can be supporting themselves and their families and be able to remain in Harrisburg, same thing with local businesses. And this is something Dr. Waters has uh, talked about for a long time. So uh, Dr. Waters, I don't know if you have anything further you want to share about that, but I know that in looking at the study uh, that we would be doing, we would be looking at taking what we would call a race neutral plus closer to race conscious but also geographical approach to the study so that we would be looking to see how can we best develop a process in which vendors of color in our own community have an opportunity to compete for the contracts. Because the data, as uh, Pastor Harris indicated, shows that it is a very minor portion of overall expenditures that are, that are going to black and brown vendors. I don't think, I don't really have anything to add. I mean, I think you said it well, um, Pastor Harris said it well. Um, you know, we have a, a, a tax base that's not as strong as other communities. And if we want to increase that tax base, we have to pour into that tax base. And I think it's the school district's job. It's also the city's job to make sure you're building that building that tax base to, 
tax base to support the things that you want to get done. Any other questions from board members? Um, this is Ms. Copeland. I, I just want to comment um, to, to you all. Just uh, It's great to see the disparity study was added to the agenda. And it just um, also just shows how much more is just not us as a board and administration, but the speaking, uh, Pastor Harris, we applaud you, Mr. Robinson, and all who have inputted to come and speak upon where it takes us all as a village to come and speak up. And even though it was over a year of time, it was something that now is taking, you know, we're taking a deeper dive and look. So um, I'm excited to see where we go and to applaud to Dr. Susky and Mr. Terman and all who have um, took the time to take a further deep into also making sure that our black and brown vendors are also included in, you know, this is disparity study to get more information. So just wanted to also feedback as a comment and applaud all the great work. Thank you. Thank you. I believe just, Mr. Carter has a comment. Yes. And uh, just a, a quick comment. I just want to say, uh, I, I would like to thank you guys for moving forward with the disparity study. Also, I would like to thank Pastor Harris and Mr. Robertson for not only um, advocating to get this done, but for, but for also speaking up in regards to um, moving this forward. Um, thank you guys. I want to thank the team for um, adding into it too. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Mr. Thompson. Thank you. Uh, I too, uh, your tenacity is impressive, Pastor Harris, and um, the, um, the ways that we procure here in the district have gravitated from a school code mandated competitive bidding process that does not favor what you want to achieve to a um, pre-negotiated pricing strategy. Uh, we let contracts for uh, a significant amount of expenditure where the uh, pre-negotiated uh, contractors um, that we hire have a lot more flexibility on who their subcontractors are. And as we move forward here, I noticed in the proposal that there were um, three different categories. One was a uh, commodity, like purchasing books or paper. Uh, another was professional services. I would note that professional services, uh, we have the uh, flexibility to just select those folks and that we could prefer uh, black and brown professionals, and uh, the last of which was these, uh, I forget it was the contractors, I think. And uh, I think that's where a lot of the litigation happens is in the contracting, just because the contractors are savvy enough to know that the courts might favor them. And... Um, I would say that in areas where we have flexibility, that this is a great uh, instance where the instructions and the terms and conditions that we offer to uh, ESI, if you choose to go in that direction, that um, we also uh, knit into that, that in situations where we have the flexibility, that we use our flexibility to achieve the goals of this school district, hire local provide jobs for our kids locally. The families and parents of our kids don't want our kids to take, uh, even if they're great paying jobs, we don't want our kids to pick up and move to Baltimore. We don't want our kids to pick up and move to Philadelphia because that's where a lot of the MBE, WBE firms are located, are far away from the families that uh, we serve. And, um, you know, as an educational institution, we have a lot of power here to train our kids to start to cultivate the kind of MBE, WBE business enterprises right here in our community by uh, educating tradesmen and tradeswomen to do the kind of uh, work that the school district needs and wants. So thank you very much for your uh, diligent efforts 
and uh, I uh, wholeheartedly endorse the disparity study approach, and I'm glad you nicked a hundred thousand bucks off it. There was one more thing I, I did want to say, and I wasn't going to say this, but just having a conversation, this comes from a conversation I had with my father this week, and he's talking about going to the original Downey School. The original Downey School was across the field from the, the Downey School that's there now, grew up in Hillside Village. And, and, and just the history of disinvestment in the city, which a lot of people don't understand, um, it was very systemic. Um, I, have a, I have a cousin, Paul Waters, who actually sued it was a restaurant on I think it was 13th and Market Street that wouldn't serve black people. Um, he sued successfully to serve black people. That restaurant moved out of the city to, to Route 15. And those are the kind of stories. Those are, that's the kind of disinvestment that happened. So it's time for folks to kind of rebuild that tax base. So, so we, we, we lost. It was a systemic uh, loss of, of, of tax revenue. And it's time to systemically uh, replace that tax revenue. Thank you, Dr. Waters. Any other comments or questions from the board? Yes, Mr. Terman. You know, I do appreciate um, the work in terms of what, uh, you know, moving forward with disparity study. And, you know, I will say in terms of from my team's perspective, um, after we had the vendor fair last March, it definitely has been a priority for us, a top priority. Um, I know for a lot of the projects we had, uh, probably starting in April, all the way up to the present, um, constantly the conversation that I had with Mr. Reedy and also Dr. Stokes was, is the company MBWB. Uh, every project um, that low bar, quote unquote, was responsible for, um, there was a concerted effort to A, find businesses in Harrisburg who could do the work. Um, you know, and I know, Mr. Mr. Uh, Pastor Harris, you know, I did show you a list of um, all the work that had been done over the past calendar year um, with businesses in the city of Harrisburg who are MBEWE. So from my team's perspective, um, this is one that we totally embrace. You know, we just I just want to, you know, once again, just step forward and say that um, this is not something a we took lightly. And B, there has been work that's been done over the past year. And um, I will applaud them for what's been done um, because we come a long way from two or three years ago. Um, it's not perfect. Not going to say we've arrived, but we have come a long way with what my expectations are for them in terms of working with providers within the city of Harrisburg. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Terman. Yes, Pastor Harris. I'll, I'll allow you to say something on this topic. fact is that it your team is on board and that's good that's what we need it's the only thing that's going to work and i thank god for each of you and i pray that each of you will stay with this and work with this and i thank god for dr suske i just want to take a moment i've been at this for 60 years since 64 when i was with snick in mississippi so this is passion. Never have I other than, and the reason I bring that up is that in that year, two white Jewish boys died in Philadelphia, Mississippi. We knew someone was going to die. When I heard they were missing, I was glad. You know why? It means that I was going to live because I knew they were dead. I was in a Delta town, but they didn't have to be there. That has always impressed me. That's why whatever the Jews do, I support, period. Dr. Susky is a rare individual. I've not met anyone like her, white or black, who was in a position of power. 
and trended to do the right thing against all the odds and all of the opposition. So I don't take credit for this. I give God the credit, but I believe he worked through her and through each of you. And I thank God for this moment. And I pray that we'll, we'll go together as a team and work collaboratively together. Thank you, sir. Hearing no further questions or comments, uh, we will look to have Mr. Terman put that on the agenda for April 24th for approval. Uh, I am working with the solicitor to see if we're going to have a formal agreement versus just having a signature page on the proposal. So I'll be able to let you know that. Moving on to our new business items, I'm going to call upon Dr. Slaughter. Uh, to take us through the Office of Academics items, please. Good evening. Thank you, Dr. Susky. I'd like to present the following um, items for um, formal approval, April 24th. Um, moving down to item B, several items under professional development. The first there is for Kristen Cruz Uchima to attend PSSA range finding for mathematics. That's participation on a PDE committee looking at PSSAs. Item two there is out of our ELD department uh, listed there, not only our director, um, but several of our teachers in our district to attend the WIDA annual conference in October in Pittsburgh, where we have been asked to present. Uh, item three there is for Karen Butera to attend the Certified School Dental Hygienist PD Day, April 24th. Funding sources uh, listed there. And then item number four is the first of um, several lists for um, attendance at the Unbound Ed Standards Institute, uh, which we talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, uh, school administrators listed their funding for CSI for this first initial list, funding sources listed there. Item C is a request for an immediate action item to recommend approval of the waiver of expulsion hearing agreement for the scholar listed there. Would you like me to pause, continue? Okay, and the last is item F, a field trip, request approval for 28 scholars, grades nine through 12 to attend the Bureau of Engraving and Printing and the National Museum of American History Value of Money exhibit in Washington, DC, funding source listed there. Are there any questions on any of the motions listed? Ms. Robinson. I just had one. I couldn't really tell for the, the field trip one. Is that, which school is that for? Is that for so, all? So that is one for under ESSER learning loss that we talked about a little bit earlier for some of the field trips that we're, so it's, um it would be for scholars who would attend um one of the high schools. Okay. That's what yeah. I mean. Is it just, it's for just high school students, not, specifically John Harris students or specific Correct. Students. Okay. I couldn't see that on the um no, that, that's a good leaving. question. Yes. Okay. But it's all we, schools. I will make sure that that's clarified okay. and addressed. So all high schoolers, whether they're Cougar, HVLA, John Harris Sci Tech, all of them. Yes, I'll make sure to verify that and thank you very much. Oh, and one more thing, and it's just limited to the twenty eight students or is it twenty eight students that have already it's so limited to, only, to the 28. To 20. Yes. Okay. I can also say too, this is part of their financial literacy um, lessons and planning that they're they're getting at the high school level. So it's an extension of that class. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Craig. Any other questions on any of the items? Okay. Hearing them, we are going to move the professional development items under B and the field trip under F to the April 24th agenda for approval. And I am going to approve this evening the waiver of expulsion hearing agreement for student 2324009. Thank you. Thank you very much. Moving on to the Office of Human Resources, Ms. Zola. Uh, good evening. Uh, under item A, we have one additional retirement from Ms. Burliner, an instructional aide at Marshall Math Science, effective June 30th, 2024. We have two resignations noted um, under um, item B. Under item C, we have requests um, for 
approval of new staff for employment. Many of them are updates to the previous agenda as we finalized um, official start dates um, with those individuals based upon um, the submission of all their paperwork and release from current employee employment. Under D, we have a request um, to transfer Ms. Shanika Collins um, from Pupil Services Secretary to Child Accounting um, Accountant um, at the rate noted, effective 4-1. Under E, we have a request um, to approve Ms. Erica Baylor as the Senior Advisor at for Cougar and HVLA. Under F, there are two requests for column movement for teachers who have completed um, additional credits. Um, if you could please note under, um, for Mr. Demko, the effective date, there's actually a typo. It should say 3-26-24, not 6-26-24. So I'd request that that um, information be updated to accurately reflect his request and column movement effective date. Under G, we have three um, requests for FMLA um, for individuals who submitted appropriate paperwork um, to take full-time or intermittent leave. Under H, we have approvals for staff to work the RSIG summer camp program for three teachers and one support staff um, members for this upcoming summer for our ELD students. Under I, um, I'm requesting immediate action um, for item one, um, a motion to approve a memorandum of understanding with the Harrisburg School District and the Harrisburg Education Association relating to health care changes for the 24-25 school year as presented. And the MOU is attached to the agenda um, that has been agreed upon between the parties. And for item two, um, we are requesting that that actually be tabled at this point in time. Thank you very much, Ms. Sula. Are there any questions or discussion on any of the motions? Yes, Mr. Thompson. Sending item two to the table. Is that at the request of the school district or the request of the union? Um, the number two. Um, so we have not finalized um, the MOU with AFSME regarding the health care. Um, we are still um, in discussions with them over certain issues as it relates to that. So we were hoping that we would have it finalized for this meeting, but unfortunately we have not finalized all the terms of that yet. So we're hoping that most likely next meeting we'll have the finalized MOU to present. Or maybe by the regular meeting. Yes, that is the hope. Any other questions? All right, hearing none, items A, B, C, D, E, F, with a correction to the date to 3-26-24. Items under G and H, will all be moved to the April 24th School Board and Receiver General Business Meeting agenda for approval. And I am approving this evening the MOU between the Harrisburg School District and the Harrisburg Education Association related to healthcare changes for next school year as attached to the agenda. And I would just like to uh, thank the Harrisburg Education Association for the ratification uh, this evening of the MOU, that ratification uh, took place after school from 3 to 6 o'clock p.m. We appreciate their cooperation uh, through this process. And we will table item number two. Thank, Thank you very much, Ms. Zula. Thank you. And do you want to take athletics for sure. us? Sure. Yes. Um, under athletics and activities, um, we have some changes to spring coaches. Um, we're recommending approval of the resignation for Trail Seegers as the assistant junior high track and field coach, effective 4 1 24, and then recommending approval of two coaches um, for the spring 23 24 season that are listed there at the stipends noted. Any discussion on those motions? 
Hearing none, we will move those to the April 24th agenda for approval. And moving on to the Office of Operations, Mr. Reedy. Thank you, Dr. Susky, and good evening, everybody. First item under operations is to recommend approval of an agreement with Cleveland Brothers Equipment Company for preventive maintenance inspections on all district generators. Inspections will commence on 5-1 and will be completed by 6-30-2024. These inspections will provide valuable data on the current state of our aging generators. Total cost, $4,984. Net funding source is the general fund. Second item is to recommend approval of a proposal from the Gordian Group to renovate the Annex Building to accommodate the Transportation Department. This renovation is needed due to transportation moving out of the Lincoln Elementary Building due to the reconfiguration. This renovation will upgrade the current maintenance offices and convert a men's bathroom to a women's bathroom. Cost is $83,114.59. Net funding source is the general fund. Just some additional background on this. Uh, the annex renovations are needed to upgrade the existing maintenance offices for transportation for when transportation moves out of the Lincoln Elementary building. In addition, we are converting men's bathroom to a women's bathroom for the three women network in transportation. Transportation space here at Lincoln is needed for the nurses suite. So that's the reason why transportation must move out. The annex is the best location since it has the space and all of operations will then be under one central location. As you know, we use KPN process quite a bit for our renovations. If we did not, we would be spending a tremendous amount of time creating bids or paying Crabtree to create these bids and hire someone to manage these projects. We often talk about the advantages and convenience of using the KPN cooperative service, but one of the key advantages is the ability to recommend to the project manager to use contractors that meet the bid prices, provide high quality work, are local and are diverse. Generally, we do not always know the contractors until the PO has been awarded, but in this case, the contractor that will be assigned to the annex upgrades will be accompanied by the name of Trumac Homes. Trumac Homes is an MBE, diverse company located here in Harrisburg. Uh, Ms. Tracy Talton is the owner and a Has Harrisburg graduate. Trumac Combs will be the main contractor on this job. There may be other specialty contractors assigned, such as the plumbing work or the floor epoxy work, but her company will be doing the largest percentage of the work. And I'd just like to reaffirm what Mr. Terman said earlier, which is that I truly appreciate the efforts that you make, Mr. Reedy and Dr. Stokes, and the work that you do in trying to find uh, MBE, WBE, local contractors. And I know you have made that a priority. And I just wanted to state again, for the record, that despite uh, thought that that's not occurring, that we know that is occurring. And, and we appreciate all the extra efforts. And it makes me very happy to hear that despite this being a KPM project, that we have a diverse business owner in the Harrisburg community who is going to get that project. So excellent, excellent work. Are there any questions from the board on either of the two items under operations before we move on to facilities? Ms. Robinson. Um, about the, um, the annex building, with transportation moving there, we don't need to do anything with the, the grounds there. Is that with trans the transportation office is moving there? Are there going to be any need for, um, I don't know, any vehicles that we use, spaces needed on that property? Do we need to do anything with the grounds there or anything? No, there's nothing. There's there's space for additional vehicles. Okay. Uh, and actually, it's good that transportation is moving there because our fuel pumps are there. So that's something that's that they oversee. So that kind of kind of mixes in. Uh, but the, the offices right now or the space that's there right now is, is not really appropriate for, for a transportation department. That's really the need to, to upgrade those areas. Okay, but so but my concern was just so the office space that's needed is really not a lot, but my concern was moving like the vehicles and like you said, there are things as far as transportation over there, so we don't need to do any other renovations to accommodate transportation moving there. No, just those bathrooms, no grounds or anything. Yeah, that's that's really it. There's no vehicles okay. that are really associated with transportation specifically, so it's not like they have to be moved over. Um, 
their desks and their their furniture and that type of stuff is an easy move over. And there's there's room for the the people working in that office as far as parking. I know it's it's kind of tight in the and in the front, but do we need to do anything to provide parking for? Uh, not, yeah, for three more, to, not for three more, not for three spaces. Yeah, there's, okay. there's, there's enough. We would like to get it seal coated at, at some that point, was, and you know, make be, make the lines a little bit more specific. That yeah. was one area that we didn't seal coat during last year. Okay. Uh, so we may bring that forward to you at some point, but, but we, we, we'll, we we're we're okay spaces. for now. Yeah, Just, we're fine. Okay. That was nice. thanks. Any other questions on those two items? All right, hearing them, we will move those two forward. And now the facility requests. Yep, just have a list of four facility requests. Any questions on the facility requests? See a hand. Yes, Ms. Robinson. Um. I'd actually had a question before, but you guys had addressed it on the number four for the um, Bureau of Police Canine. Um, I know we were talking about this, the sale of that property. What happens if the sale goes through before this is completed? Yeah, we had conversations with, with them. We let them know that that sale is being sold to Susquehanna. They understand once once the sale goes through, they, they will and working on that property or doing what they do on that property. Okay, so, but they're not willing to honor this time frame with the, the, the canine training? Are you talk, what are you talking about ending the work under the canine unit? Well, it, it's, it's, doing it's actually unlikely that we will have the full sale processed and completed by 630. So it probably won't apply so it's at all. Moved. It's okay. yeah, it's right. not, it's not gonna apply. Okay. Uh, but if it did, and let's say for somehow we, we settled in May, um, then the police understand that they won't be able to be on that property because it's going to be owned by Susquehanna. And then they would have to make the request to Susquehanna if they wanted to stay on that. Property. Okay. So this wouldn't, even though this would be an agreement with Harrisburg, it wouldn't, it wouldn't apply. Sale, it wouldn't. Right. They could always approach Susquehanna and ask them though, right? right. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, uh, we will move the facility use request to the April 24th agenda for approval as well. And moving on to business services, Dr. Stokes. Thank you, Dr. Susky. We have very standard information under the Office of Business Services this evening. First one is a treasurer's report, and this is for February 29th, 2024, with a bank balance of $51,405,320.82. Item B is our budget transfers for this school year. Item C is a ratification of all of our accounts payable checks, as well as our PNC procurement card and our ACHs from March. In item D, you will notice there's three payroll processings. This is because two times a year we have three pays in a month, and March happens to be one of those. Very good. Any questions on any of the standard items? Hearing none, we will move those forward to April 24th for approval. Thank you, Dr. Stokes. Thank you. And Mr. Terman, Superintendent's Office. Thank you, Dr. Susky. All right, so we have two things on the agenda for this evening. Uh, one is an approval, the other is a ratification. The 2024 prom uh, pr request approval for the attached agreement. This is with the Lower Paxton P uh, Police Department, and there will be providing security coverage for the Harrisburg prom, save the date, May 18th. That will be at the Best Western Hotel at a cost of $80.60 per hour per officer. And that's the funding source for that is going to be the class of 2024. And then also save the date again, 2024 graduation. Request ratification for approval of the attached rental agreement of the Farm Show Complex for the purpose of graduation on June 5th in the amount of $2,076.50 plus additional costs for sound microphone podium and other requested services as outlined in the agreement. Questions? Just Ms. Robinson? Just a comment. Um, last year and this year, it seems like the, the graduation is going to be on, in the middle of the week. Is there, um, I know before it used to do it on a Saturday early afternoon. It's kind of difficult, but to do it in the middle of the week is there is it a scheduling thing with 
the farm show or just what dates we have available? Or right. So one of the goals of the district is to have um, teachers present at graduation. And one of the challenges was having graduation on a Saturday mm -hmm. where it was difficult to get teaching staff um, to attend graduation. So um, our goal is to be able to have a graduation where um, you have your teaching staff who you know, are available and who are attending support students who, for the most part, they've had for four years. Um, so we tried something different with not going on a Saturday, but going to an evening. Uh, I will say last year's graduation, once we figured out what time we need to start, um, went very well. Um, we will be making a few changes uh, to kind of the ceremony, kind of shorten some things uh, to make sure we can get through uh, in a time frame that makes sense. Is it possible to, no, it, I didn't see, I think it starts about six so we're going to start at seven o'clock. We tried to start at six last year. And by the time it was quarter of six, you know, there was like 400 people outside. So we ended up, I don't know if you recall, yeah. six yeah. became 615, became 630, became 645. And then we actually started processing at 655. So we're going to start at seven o'clock. And and not I, my son graduated last year. So I was, I know. I was there. So, but um, my concern is just when, when it ends so late, so, say around nine or so, it doesn't really give the the parents or the families an opportunity to to celebrate after, because if it's after nine, then everybody has to get up and go to work the next day. It was just my, I just noticed, I didn't, I saw the date, but I didn't check the day that it was and just realized that it was on a Wednesday. But so try for next year for well, we can have well, some. We'll see we'll, how this works right. this year with the time. Yeah, I will say though, I do think you know, with only three hundred and some odd students graduating, um, if we shorten the program, we should be able to get through an hour and fifteen minutes. It should not be lasting three hours. So once That's we get sure. to a normal graduation time, um, hopefully families will be able to have time in the evening. Okay. Right. Anything else on those two motions? Hearing none, we will move those to the April 24th agenda for approval. I see no policy updates. Oh, okay, go ahead. This is just um, an announcement. If some of our, right now um, we have our election coming up on the 23rd. So we have um, students who may want to participate in the um, election process. So on the 23rd, if you, if we have students that are willing and available to work, they can work a half day or the whole day they are paid. And if need be, you can contact Ms. Uh, Maria Diaz Crispin, she's the one who coordinates a lot of the, the student poll workers to send to the election office and will have them assigned to different polling places, hopefully close to their home. So it's just a way for the students to be involved in the process and also to make some money. Um, so hopefully, if you know any students, just please contact Ms. Diaz Crispin and she'll send the students to the different polling places. So that's all I wanted to before. Okay. Thank well, you. Well, along those lines, Mr. Terman just reminded me our next meeting is not two weeks from tonight because that's primary election day. It is Wednesday, April 24th instead of Tuesday. We are adjourned. <laughs>